It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at a new budget handheld from AliExpress. And this one was quite interesting, if you ask me. So yeah, the thing that I got was absolutely nothing than just a bag with a freaking or a zip bag with some stuff in it. So what are we going to get is very simple. We're going to get out the micro USB cable. So with these cheap devices, we're still using micro USB. We do have a TV out function that I wanted to try out. And we do have this very nice five star money back. <laughs> like, I must say they're being very creative, like asking them to leave and feedback. And this one, I must say like, I just need to keep it because it's freaking, freaking awesome. Of course, we're going to get ourselves the toilet paper manual with some ink. I'm hoping was an English explanation how everything worked, but most of the time there's nothing much in it. And then we have like the handheld and we do have like the controller. So I've reviewed a couple of these devices, but I can tell you this one is different and it is it's like completely different to begin with. Like when you're looking at the shape at the front, when you're looking at the AliExpress picture, you're thinking, hey, I already have like reviewed this. It was the M9 or something like that. But nope, this is absolutely different. We still have like this shitty, like annoying, like slider joystick. I'm not a big fan of it because yeah, there is no grip on the freaking like like on this piece of plastic i wish they used like a nintendo switch and knock off like or similar joystick that would be so much better we do have like the four button layout at the front some have like the six button i per personally really love the six button layout then we have like two shoulder buttons and we're looking at the form factor i must say it plays quite comfortable so that is very good we do have the reset button select start over here at the top we're going to get the jack out this is for the tv out then we have a micro usb for charging and of course the on off switch over here and it seems to be nothing is happening no so the battery inside is dead so let's take a close look in here. So do we get ourselves the Nokia battery? This is the BL5C. This is the 1020 milliamp. There is also like a bigger one, not like a huge difference, but there is a bigger one. But let's take a close look at this. So we do get this, like this Super Famicom controller. I must say the overall quality is not bad at all. But the most important thing is the smelly test. Mm, smells nice. But the thing is like, it doesn't smell like chemical. We do have like the rubber select and start. We do have like the two kind of different buttons, but you can see like the button quality. There are even like some different levels and it feels really cheap. We have like the hollow buttons and the other ones, very nice. But what makes this thing really unique is of course the Nintendo Switch. So what they didn't do with the freaking handheld, they did do with this bloody thing. I'm like, why? Why couldn't you like add this one over here? It would be such a big like improvement. There's only one connection. So yeah, the little bit of a bummer with this is like, one connection, so if you need to charge it and play a game, it's not going to be working. So let's charge this bloody thing and let's see what we're going to get with the menu. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is remove the screen protector or... Oh, damn it. I think that was not... I think, what the hell is going on? So normally you need to basically peel off this part of it, but they messed it up. Damn it. Oh. All right, so let's try to remove this freaking thing. I'm just going to do it from this angle. Let's remove it. The main problem with these things are like they are super stretched up. Oh, that's much better. But it didn't imply that no, they didn't like put the screen protector on right because you can see some from air over here and there's no way to get it out. So, oh man, what a pain in the ass. So let's boot this thing up. All right, so in the meantime, that is going to be charging. Let's take a closer look at the menu. So the menu, we've seen it before. So we do get like these eight, like say shortcuts to games. Unfortunately, you cannot change it out. So this thing is limited like we've seen before. Okay, so let's see if we can even do something with the language. I can see there is something we can change out with. I think this is the, let's see how I can go back. Ah, oh, here it is. Let's see if I can find the freaking language option over here. Yeah, I think it is somewhere over here. Oh, this is the TV out function. This is the way how version it is, version 3.0. Let's go back. Okay, this is something we don't need to mess with. But the weird thing is like there is no... There is somewhere English in here. Ah, there it is. All right, so we do find it <laughs> freaking finally. Take consideration if there are like sometimes you do have the uh, we don't have the option to change the language in the games. So what are the options that we do have here? We do get NES, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, and MAME. That we have seen it before with these cheap devices. So 
let's boot a couple of the games like the, the menus are basic yeah you only see some files that's it if the files names are completely messed up they messed up the file naming or over here so take that into consideration that they got some questions in the past about that all right so if you basically want to make a quick load quick save you do have the option by pressing reset we need to press it twice somehow then we can make a quick load quick save over here this does work with every single item or single platform so that's pretty damn cool we do have like separate save slots for every single game so that's pretty damn awesome but let's take a close look at the gameplay of the nes all right so the famicom part is not bad at all okay so let's plug out this charger for now let's plug in the controller let's see if we can just plug it in and start gaming okay so let's see if it's going to be working first this player let's see if it works over there we need to reset it so here you can see it doesn't do anything all right yeah it doesn't have enough power but let's reset it again and let's do that again Okay, so it's clearly they're using all games because it sounds a little bit slow. Another thing I found a little bit of a bummer with the display, you can see like the viewing angle of the 3.5 inch is not great. You can see like some back bleeding from the display over here. All right, so let's see how this play with this horrible freaking joystick. Just freaking start the bloody thing. Yeah, absolutely. Holy shit, you can see an old shitload of screen tearing. You can see them. Oh man, like this is absolutely garbage. I must say that the audio is pretty damn loud of this thing. Alright, so. Let's adjust the volume. Okay, that seems to be working just fine. All right, so let's take it close over here. We've got the race mode, battle mode. So let's play some Game Boy Advance. Sometimes you find these weird games. All right, okay. But so far, so good, you know? I personally never played this game before. Quite interesting. But again, when it comes to the emulation performance, it's just what you can expect from a cheap device. And even more sometimes. Reset, and then we can go back to the main menu. All right, so let's try some Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. No, by many people, but you can see like the emulation performance is pretty damn bad. You got audio delay, and this freaking analog stick makes it, in my opinion, unplayable. Beefcake. Such a shame, you know. It's not like the fact that it's like super super horrible, but I think if you want to play some real Genesis games, it just needs to be running perfectly to get like the also yeah that's an old school experience. So next up, Super Famicom, and it's going to be a pain to listen and look at this because it's absolutely horrendous. Like you can just hear the audio is just garbage, audio delay. So when it comes to this 16-bit stuff, it's absolutely unplayable. We need to get used to the freaking analog stick again. This is what I mean, like, oh, horrible. Now for some beefcake and dinos, but already from the start I can see like it runs like shit. Like I had some weird stuff going on, the game even started and I could still hear the freaking title screen. So let's see. Oh, that's freaking analog stick. I hate it. So 
from here you can see like the performance of the names absolutely way better than the 16-bit era such a bummer they completely messed up like one of the best like platforms to play on these devices wow what is such a big like shame including like the freaking audio delay you have here all right so the next thing i wanted to try out is a tv out function it's pretty damn cool that this cheap device does have it but yeah so what you need to do is go to the settings and set it up there otherwise you don't get any signal out so next thing i wanted to try to do i think my battery is charged enough i just wanted to check out the main let's see a plug-in extra controller because that's one of those functionalities that's absolutely great you can just use this thing like in game system you can see like that there's no image on the display over here so everything has been put out to the tv out including the audio so let's boot up a game and let's see if we can play with two players on the tv out function Okay, so I did a full reset on this bloody thing and nothing seems to be working. You can boot it up, but you cannot use the second controller. I don't know if this is going to be a software issue. I tried a couple of games, a couple of platforms, but I reset the system a couple of times. I tried everything. It's absolutely garbage. Another thing I'm also noticing is like, there is no audio somehow. All right, so yeah, what do I think of the TVO function? It's a big disappointment for sure. So the thing I can do is like basically reset it over here, leave it on just to see, let's mess around with the cables. Maybe something is going on. Let's plug in over here. All right, everything has been plugged in the right position. Let's boot it back up. Make you see nothing works. So the TVO function is absolutely broken. Let's plug back in. Come on. Nope, nothing at all. I'm gonna say this is basically the first time that I messed it up when it comes to the TV out, especially when it comes to the audio quality. The video quality in general, it's not like not great. Or better said, like audio quality, the audio signal out because this is not working at all. But I think like one of those features that would be great with a device like this. You bring this thing on vacation, you plug it in television, you plug in your second controller. The only downside is you cannot really charge this thing. So you need to add like a second micro USB, especially for charging this uh, yeah, device. So this thing has a lot of flaws and a lot of problems. So when you're looking at the cheap device, it's always like the gamble what you're going to get. And that's the reason I basically started making these reviews. Because with these Chinese handhelds, sometimes you do get like a lot of great stuff, quality stuff from there. But sometimes you're going to get like absolutely garbage. And this is, in my opinion, garbage. The idea, idea behind it, we have seen it before with some different hands I've reviewed. And yeah, they were coming with all kinds of names. M6, M9, Sub, you know, you know like a lot of kind of different names. But they did deliver. Wicked's going to be naughty, it's time to break the seal. Yeah! Alright, so let's get this show on the road. So this is basically like the back plate over here, or the, yeah, the piece of plastic at the back. And yeah, there's nothing much in it, beside the battery. So let's see what the production date. So wow! So I recently purchased this thing like a brand new, and this thing is already like a couple of years old. Yeah, I was making this video. So this thing is made in 2020. Battery compartment over here. So I find quite interesting construction. We're looking at the micro switches. They made it, I think it's like always fun to tear down these things and people really like just just like seeing these. Let's move the joystick so I can lift out the PCB. So this is absolutely like old crap. Like so this shining it as new. So we're just going to get ourselves the front plexi with some membranes over here. They're using the cheap ones, the translucent ones. This one is stuck over here with the PCB, so I'm going to leave it over here. So it is possible to change out the display. The problem is getting in display is even more like a bigger challenge. That we have like these foam support blocks. Let's see what kind of SD card you're using. Like four gigabyte. There's nothing much. Of course, if you're using the, this kind of one, let's say, platforms, you don't need like a lot of storage space. Do have the speaker over here. Don't see what kind of one it is. It's really installed on the, the main board over there. So this is basically what you're going to get in the inside, my friends. So when you're going to buy yourself some stuff from Aliexpress, I know myself what I'm going to get myself into. And after this video, I hope you also know what you're going to get. Take consideration, it's just a gamble. Sometimes you're going to get yourself like a pretty damn awesome piece of hardware for not a lot of money. And sometimes you're going to get crap like this. I think the biggest, like, like the biggest problem with this thing is like the second controller doesn't work. And I was very excited simply because it was just something new. The conclusion is like this isn't cheap handheld and already knew like when you're getting something like this for a couple of dollars you will not get like the most perfect emulation. 
but when you're looking at let's say what you're going to get now it's absolutely like laughable we do get not a great performance especially when it comes to let's say the main 16-bit the stuff that makes this thing interesting and not even forget the controller itself that it doesn't work and i don't understand why they're using like an analog stick from a nintendo switch on the controller but don't use it on the handheld because that would be so big the improvement of course i prefer to have a normal d-pad I want to thank you for watching, let me know in the comments what you think of this, it will be great to see you next video, so consider subscribing, hit the little bell, it will be great to see you in the next video. I don't know what I just did that, but you know, whatever. See you next time, bye bye.